Blind Date with John Peel. John Peel reviews the sounds of September 1968. Jethro Tull, this is also on their LP, which is musically very good but the production isn't very good, which is unfortunate. They produced it themselves, and it could have benefited from some more professional knowledge because they are a very professional group. I like them, they have a good mixture of Roland Kirk and Captain Beefheart, which all goes back to the blues obviously. She lives on love streets, lingers long on love streets. The Doors, I don't agree with your comments about American groups last week, but I agree to a certain extent about The Doors. At the Roundhouse, I preferred Jefferson Airplane. They were very together, and they were concerned with getting music across, rather than images. I thought that The Doors were good musically, but I was disappointed. If they evolve around Jim Morrison purely as a show, which is his reputation, then to compare him to Mick Jagger is ridiculous. All that Mick does on stage is natural. Jim Morrison crouched on stage, did a leap, and landed rather self-consciously. Keith Emerson could play organ better if he didn't stick knives into it. And Jimi Hendrix could play better if he didn't stuff his guitar. I'm sure Emerson and Hendrix are fed up with it, and I'm sure Jim Morrison is fed up with it. I can't understand Jonathan Smith getting so violent over The Doors though, because some of the tracks on their albums are shattering. The Doors fall between two stools, they are in the position of being a pubes underground group, which is a shame. The girls get terribly excited about them, and yet, they also appeal to the neo-intellectuals. I prefer their records, they look very contrived on stage. <laughs> Oh yeah, Sunshine of Your Love, this is a very memorable track from Disraeli Gears, and has been a hit single twice in America. That's the reason why they're now releasing it as a single here. I've liked it very much ever since Disraeli Gears came out. It's one of those riffs that keeps running through your ears, and you can't remember where it came from. On the subject of the cream generally, nothing anybody says can stop them breaking up. And instead of one incredible group, there will be three incredible groups. I recently met Eric Clapton for the first time in some hideous pop contest, and I was very surprised to find him such a gentle person. I don't know what he's going to do, I don't think he does, he finds success a bit overwhelming. Each time he has reached a peak with the Yardbirds or John Mayall or Cream, he has fallen off. I know Ginger Baker is very upset about the whole thing and you can't blame him because he waited so long to make it. I wish we could get him together for a final session on Top Gear. I can't say that I know Eric very well, but he does seem to find blind acceptance unattractive. I thought that the reaction to him at the Sunbury Festival was very interesting. When he walked on to play with Ginger Baker unannounced, they just clapped politely. When he was announced, yells and thunderous applause. What I like about his guitar playing is that it doesn't have the neurotic quality a lot of them have. He flows and has continuity. Yes, we played this six weeks ago, I'd like to see it a hit because the Cheap Thrills LP is nice. And the group live is even more amazing. It's very sad indeed that this group is breaking up and Janis Joplin is going by herself. She tends to lapse into a soul cliché, but it's okay because she does it with such power. I never thought I'd play a record with Socket to me. She's got an Aretha Franklin thing, with a backing that sounds like Country Joe and the Fish. I'm afraid that when she goes out on her own, she will be just another soul singer with brass backings. I think both Janice and Big Brother will suffer. It would be nice to see this at the top of the chart and to see them on top of the pops. That program is such a drag, just like something from the Stone Age. Maybe I'm just getting old. The time is here for a television program that puts on the same sort of groups that we play. There are at least 50 groups in the country that could do with television exposure right now. Maybe they will get somebody who looks good to present them. Maybe if I had my teeth caked, wore a hairpiece, and developed a slightly more vibrant personality, they might let me do it. My first Here's a track I wanted to play on Top Gear but it's too long. This was recorded in England. The Steve Miller Band won a contest at Capitol and could record wherever they chose. When I first heard it, it didn't sound exciting. But now, every time I hear it, I get warm. 
It's very simple, and it sounds like it was done in one tape. The track we are listening to, is very beautiful. This is one of my favorite albums of the moment. It's a pity that whenever they do a nice sleeve design in America, they can't seem to reproduce it here. If anybody has got any money to spare, I recommend this album. Yes, this track is very Floydian, which can't be bad. I'm just worried about my woman, what can I do? I'm worried on you. It's Chicken Shack. We've played all these tracks so far on the radio. Too many blues band are doing the same numbers and they sound essentially the same, trying to play like Peter Green or Clapton or Stan Webb. Where will it all end? Chicken Shack are about the top blues band in the UK as long as Stan Webb can go on singing like this, without doing himself a mischief. And it was nice to see Christine Perfect in the Melody Maker poll. But I wonder, how long can these bands survive doing the same numbers? They need more imagination, that's the reason why Jethro Tull are doing so well. I think the blues crowd used to be very discerning, but when wider acceptance of blues came, they have become less discerning. If you go through the motions writing around with a guitar, you please the fans. I think Peter Green agrees with me on this. It's like a phallic symbol or something. I think it's one of the reasons why Eric is getting out of Cream. He could have gone on without bothering to tune his guitar, and they would have screamed and fallen over. The Fleetwood Mac thing did very well, and this is a very good record, so it may get into the lower part of the chart. I don't know who it is. Is it Ornette Coleman? This is something that I want to understand. I've listened and tried to get into this. And I saw Ornette Coleman at the Albert Hall. But in the first half, I fell asleep, bored to distraction. The second part was exciting. But I've never recaptured it by listening to his records. I wish I could get into this and see what happens. Because it's obvious that people who like this kind of stuff, are very involved and dedicated.